my name is Ian and welcome to Planted. I'm a plant junkie, I've been growing plants since the 80s and I willingly share my plant knowledge with you so that you can have great success in your own garden. Now in this episode, I'm going to introduce you to a, a remarkable plant that in my garden starts flowering in April and goes all the way through to first frosts. It's not Salvia Amistad, it's a wonderful plant called Anasodontia. Let's go. So this is the spectacular Anasodontia Stribing Beauty. And this is right up there with Salvia Amistad in terms of its ability to consistently and relentlessly flower. You get these two inch wide pink flowers and there's a, a much darker center to it. Here we are in late June and this started flowering in early April. Uh, it was planted out much better off in the ground as many plants are because it can get a really good root run and that root run is what supports this prolific growth. Now at any one time there will be 100 plus flowers open and I think that's what makes it so special because it doesn't just peak for a two week period and then stop. It's just this steady, reliable flowering machine that is healthy and uh, very, very productive. Now, this is a, a tender perennial, and that is that it does need some protection in the winter, as is the case with many of my plants. But what you get with this is uh, a plant, you can take a cutting of your big plant in the fall or autumn, overwinter that little cutting on a windowsill, keep it warmer, and I don't mean hot, but if you keep it 45, 55 degrees, it will happily just tick along through the winter and then come late February, put it into a bigger pot. and It'll start to grow for you nicely. And before you know it, we're in uh, early April, late April, when you can plant it outside. And that's why you don't have to keep a big plant through the winter. It, it doesn't need to be brought in in a large pot and take up a lot of space. You can keep it on the small side and it will definitely reward you. Now, why do I like this? What is it that it makes it so special? Um, you don't just get this single flash of color. It will just keep on putting out flowers day in, day out, week in, week out, and for many months. So if it starts flowering in April, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, this could go through until the end of October. And that is a spectacular return. Um, I think one of the most notable effects is that you get flowers way down here, very, very low, and it's a little bit darker. And obviously as you go higher up, there's more and more flowers. And then in the tips, it's just covered with flower buds. And that's what's yet to open. So by finding this plant and bothering to propagate it and keep it going, much as the Salvia Amistad, it is just a true knockout. Something well worth having. A few more details about this Anastodontia. You've got these very durable, wiry stems. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had a storm come through, some heavy rain and wind, and the plant was shaken, and I came out and I looked at it, and I thought, well, you know, we'll just give it a little bit of time and see if it can, and see if it can recover, and it most certainly did. Rather than it being splayed open and exploded, it grew, I wouldn't say back the way it was, but these branches, when unsupported, do move around, and it's that movement that makes them stronger. Now, having said that, if I leave it like this, we've got growth from way down here, coming all the way up. So we've got growth of two to three feet. At some point it will flop. So it's always advisable to pinch out two or three inches of growth. And rather than this part continuing to grow up, we end up with side shoots, which will have more flowers. And that's just simple basic pruning, in that by pruning, you stop upward growth and you increase uh, the plant become more bushy and it will open out for you. So I've talked about the flowers, I've talked about the habit. This is a, a leaf and uh, it's got two lobes, one each side with a center. Very attractive, I think very tropical looking. Uh, it's not a tropical plant, but I've never had discoloration with the leaves. The leaves just keep on 
being produced and there's no curl or discoloration. I've not had any bugs or bacteria take it over. So this, this has got a lot going for it. Now the name, don't let the name put it off, off you, Anasodontia Striving Beauty. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's widely available, but do a search for it and you will, you will find it. You might have to buy it mail order. So here's one of those branches that got a little bit rumbled in the storm. See how it's got a curl on it. I will probably cut that back to about here so that this weight doesn't drag it down. And then here you can see the naturally occurring side shoots are popping out. There's a little side shoot right there. There we go. So that will come out and have more flowers. And we want to support this side shoot generation and that is why you pinch out two or three inches. Now you could come down a little bit further, but I can't be removing so many flowers. And this is where maintenance and care at the right time will pay you dividends. This whole job will take but a, a minute It does seem a little heavy-handed to go through and pinch them like this. But it will absolutely help the plant grow even better. So let's Some years ago I took five Anisodontia cuttings from a mother plant that I bought from Annie's Annuals on the west coast. Now this is a wonderful plant to practice on because I find them tough and reliable. They like it on the drier side. And I can tell that these cuttings are ready to pot on because we've got lots of new fresh growth on the top of the plant. But rather than diving in there, let's just check. And the best way to do that is to thread your hand through the cluster of rooted cuttings and very carefully invert the pot. And when you invert the pot, this means that you can pinch the sides and you can readily lift the pot off the root ball without the root ball or the cuttings getting damaged. And here we can see we've got a good amount of roots throughout the entire root ball, and this is ready for dividing. If I leave it much longer, it'll just get more and more dense. Now, inevitably, there'll be a little bit of ripping and tearing. That's okay. You want the plants to separate with a reasonable amount of root so that you can pot them on individually. Make sure that you get the plant centered and level and this lets those roots grow evenly throughout the pot. Now this plant cost me $12 from Annie's Annuals. If it flowers for six months of a year, that's $2 a month, 50 cents a week. I don't know that there's better value than that. And uh, all you have to do is a search and you'll find this plant available. Now this is the plant that you've seen in the garden now. This is five months ago, maybe four months ago. And uh, I don't mind getting in there with the clippers and really giving it a haircut. And the reason I'm giving it a haircut now is that the plant is telling me that it wants to grow. This new fresh growth is a signal that the plant has now got warm enough conditions with enough sunlight to initiate growth. And by removing branches that I don't want, I can direct where that new growth will go. Now you can add your fertilizer, it can be granular, it can be liquid. And uh, although I'm shaking this a lot, there's not a huge amount of fertilizer going on there. And please make sure that you water. It's really important that this plant's got water and food and heat for it to start to perform like this. Anisodontia striving beauty, an absolute beautiful plant and well worth growing. So what I'd like you to do is to send this video to all your friends that complain that they don't have any summer color. Or better still, go onto the anniesannuals.com website and you can buy one for them and give it to them as a birthday present or a Christmas present or any present. I don't mind, it's your choice. Anyway, thank you for watching. Get out in the garden and please go and plant something.